achieved with CryEngine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another instance of George's Corner. In this case, actually the first instance. So we are now at the Rohrbach farm here on the map of the fighting over the sunken lane. And just behind it, you can see some of the examples of the beehives that they had behind the house during the time. Now, it was unfortunately uh, the fate of some of the Pennsylvania troops that as they were marching through that uh, area behind the house there happened to be a cannonball that went rampaging right through those beehives and you can understand that there was quite a few bees that were rather uh, upset at this little t turn of events and it was very upsetting also for the uh, Pennsylvania troops I can assure you in any case, yet again, we have Major Stone attempting to herd the cattle about, as it were, and getting them uh, prepared for their attempt at the sunken lane. And while they're making their way towards the sunken lane, let's also make our way to it as well and see what sort of defenses the Confederates might have come up with as of yet. On our sunken lane map here, the Confederate forces spawn on the other side of the cornfield here, where that line of trees is. And so here they're just beginning to form their lines at the sunken lane. Now, the lane itself is sunken mainly because this was used as a main road that led from the various farms to, for instance, the Pry Mill and the Ford that was at the mill there, which allowed people to get to the mill itself as well as the various markets and such like that. And over the years that it was used as the main thoroughfare, it proceeded to get sunken more and more into the ground due to the furrows of the various uh, coaches and carts and things like that. Ah, and it looks like we actually have one of the Confederates scouting out the positions there you can see at the top of the hill. Albeit at the moment it does not seem that we have an overall commander. Don't worry, there's always that guy taking the field. So it does look like there is a commander here somewhere, albeit of an informal nature. While they also have scouts to the right as... <laughs> as the uh, lane down here on the right-hand side tends to be a favorite method of attack versus coming directly over the hillside. But it looks like Major Stone is going to attack them front and center. So he is beginning to form this line into a proper cohesive one. And here, from the Confederate forces point of view, they are already opening fire against their Union counterparts. As you can already see, bullets flying across. And indeed they are charging even as we speak. And they're desperately trying to reload, trying to get bayonets fixed. As men fall to deadly hits. Now the melee that you are seeing at the moment is going to be of a very beginning nature. We are constantly going to be working on this, trying to improve it. And it looks like the Union are taking the day at the moment, in which case they'll be able to take control of the command section. And hopefully the Confederates can get in quickly enough. 
<laughs> he had a bit of a delayed reaction to a deadly intent. And it looks like they have a counter charge coming in, led by a, uh, a Lieutenant Colonel Boland here. And he is causing ripe mayhem in what's left of the Union lines. Oh, and he is taken down. And it looks like there is just two Union now left to take control. Oh, just one Union now. So it is up to Hatashi here, the 69th, to do what he can to hold the line as Razor comes in to take him out. <laughs> or make him shy away. <laughs> oh, and Razor is taken down. Hatashi has held the line. But Lily has been able to as reinforcements stream in from the rear. So let's take a look at the Confederate counterattack, see if they are in the midst of heading across. Oh, yep, we can see them coming through. And already an officer, now Kimo, is heading in. Well, First Sergeant Josh of the 15th South Carolina, Company K is trying to wreak his own form of havoc. Oh, and he is taken down. And Major Stone has returned. Oh, and there goes the flag bearer. Oh, and even more are taken down. Oh, Major Stone is down as well. Taken down by Kucha. <laughs> as he's desperately trying to take out for Sergeant Grishaber here. Oh, and Charles the God is taken down by Kyle here. How dare you, Kyle, take him down? How could you? Oh, but Billy is looking to do a little lone counter sniping here. He is the only one left to hold the line, can he? Oh no! The Confederates have retaken the line here at the sunken lane. So what you're hearing Major Stone talk about is two files, meaning that there will be two Nothing lines really rather going. than just You're the one. And that's because during the time of the Civil War, that had become the major use of uh, Napoleonic tactics. Just prior to the American Civil War, you had the major drill book of the time being that of Scott's drill tactics, in which case he favored three lines usually. But by the t 1850s, uh, starting with Hardy's in 1855, he had reduced that down to just two ranks, two lines, instead of the three. And that became the norm for most of the drill books in the 1860s as well. After quick time. Four words! <clears throat> oh. oh, that was, that was terrible. <laughs> Four words! <laughs> Oh. High fires left. Oh. So adolescent showcasing besides. We can hear the incoming rounds from the Confederate artillery trying to take out these lines. And by the looks of it, they are trying to go ahead and flank the Confederates by going down that lane I was showcasing previously. Uh, 
Pop tart, Joffers, Tapettes. And by the looks of it, even McDonald's can be quite a better change versus having to endure all that uh, hardtack and salt pork and such. Give or take, anyway. Sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> the Confederates are making sure to return their own, trying to form lines on the right here. Now this is something that happened during the battle as well when you had some of the Union actually start flanking down the line and causing a terrible, terrible amount of casualties amongst the, uh, the Confederates while at the same time the remaining elements of French's and Anderson's division were coming across him from the front down across. I'm sorry, Richardson's division, excuse me, not Anderson. And here come the Union charging down the line, also taking their own casualties and being countercharged by the Confederates. <laughs> As Major Stone desperately tries to beat off the Confederate flag bearer. Oh, and the flag bearer is down. Let's see if they can avoid the jerk here. Oh, Major Stone has taken down Mr. Jerk there. And there's just a few on each side left. Will they be able to hold the line here? Major Stone is trying to hold them off. Oh, and they were able to take down the remainder. Now they'll have to desperately try to hold on as the Confederate countercharge is made as the smoke clings to the air and bodies litter the lane once more. Do you think we can offer our surrender? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can try. Now, by the way, speaking of the forging that was done on the march, some of the other things that you would oftentimes see from the soldiers as they march to the front towards battle would be things like playing cards and extra clothing, things like that, that they would, uh, not so much the extra clothing, but things that they would throw to the wayside to, number one, help uh, shed some weight, and number two, especially in regards to playing cards, uh, if they did fall during the battle, they didn't want such things to be found on their person and sent back to their families. Things like playing cards and things like that were right up there with porn magazines in terms of uh, kind of a bad thing to have to remember a family member by. So they would oftentimes throw dice and playing cards and whatever other illicit materials back. And it looks like the main Union body might have been scouted out. Doesn't look like General Jackson was able to conceal his own positions or take out the enemy scouts. They're able to see the Union flag there through the trees. And now they're reporting those positions back. Straight east. Straight east. Straight east. And as you can see, they're making use of the compass right there up top. Oh, and are already getting taken down by some of the skirmishers to the right. Perhaps acting as a uh, little diversions to the main push. So it looks like we have terrible fighting going on here in the second lane and once more the Confederates have remained victorious as Major Stone attempts to take out his own section. Oh, and it is a double play there 
as Major Stone and his attacker were both taken down. And the Sergeant Major here is perhaps apprehending this poor Union Private. Or just taking him out. <laughs> oh, Sergeant Major scored us. No attempt at... Oh. Oh, you are an enemy. That's not nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm imagining the Cookie Monster. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're literally just going to try and overwhelm the shift. Wait, of numbers. There's nothing fancy about it. Sounds like a very Union tactic. It was definitely the one that was used here at the Sunken Lane, historically speaking. Now, what you were seeing just before was that white line across the field. The officers have the ability by pressing Q to actually draw a line on the ground that the others can actually see. Now, contrary to popular belief, the actual charge was not this pell-mell run towards the enemy immediately. At first, when given the order to charge bayonets, charge, the men would advance at quick time at the enemy, still in a cohesive rank, where the rear rank would be at right shoulder shift, and the front rank would have the uh, their bayonets pointed towards the enemy. Already they have taken significant casualties in this fight crossed, and it becomes a crazy melee across the field here. Oh, and that is the last of what was left of the Union. But the Confederates are now down to just 27 tickets. So it remains to the remaining Union lines to try and finish off the last few. But just one and a half minute left. Will the Union be able to take them down? If they can get down the remainder of the Confederate line here before General Jackson is able to reinforce with the elements of Hood's division, perhaps the Union might yet still win the day. It looks like some of the Confederate officers are attempting to uh, organize their own little bit of a pincer movement. So we have second lieutenant Bolin there. <laughs> and General Joffrey's deciding now is a great time to reload. <laughs> oh, and a little bit of a delayed death there. Oh, and a point blank kill. But we have another cohesive charge, and it looks like the Confederates are actually being a bit cocky here and actually abandoning their defensive post, especially now that they are so low in regards to tickets, and continuing to get lower still, down to just eight. The Union that has been defeated by a very spirited Confederate defense. Alrighty, so thank you very much for joining me, Major Stone. It was a pleasure seeing you uh, in the field and at work, as it were. Uh, how did you think it went today? It was two of the closest battles I have ever fought. The first one being fought at the Sunken Lane and the second one being fought at Westwoods. On both occasions, the Confederate ticket count was so close to running dry, but we were just unable to push them off the point though we almost did on Sunken Road, and when we were unable to push them onto the point, we were slightly unable to kill them all, which was very sad. Yeah, I think it was down to just perhaps 16 tickets or so? 
Or no, even less I, than I, that. He I had six, screen, right? I took a screenshot. I'm 100% planning on posting it. Uh, yeah, it was like 16 to 12, anywhere between there. Yeah, if I recall right, they were down to just six tickets by the end of the uh, battle there when it finally was declared their victory. And I noticed that during that battle that you were using all sorts of uh, different attempts. Uh, for instance, you tried once on the left, once on the right, several times down the middle, uh, and you even split your forces. So what made you uh, think about all those things? So firstly, we had to uh, assess who might have been commanding the Confederate forces present at the Sunken Road. When we came to the conclusion that it seemed to be commanded by Cody from the 42nd Virginia, we decided that frontal assaults weren't going to be enough to throw them off the point, which have worked in the past. We realized that we were actually going to have to use a bit of planning, which is very unknown to us Union chaps. We like to use the bayonet and we like to use shot. But our attempts were simple at first, just to see what we could do. We tried a simple left flank, we tried a simple right flank. But when uh, neither of those yielded results, we had a look at what we could do by splitting our forces. Unfortunately, the rebels had the exact same idea with splitting their forces, and on several occasions when we did drive them from the point, we were subsequently routed by flanking rebel troops. Not many, but enough to push off what was left of us. Right, exactly, yeah, and I was watching from above as you guys were uh, splitting off, and I noticed at the time that there was pretty much the same exact thing going on on the southern side as well. And I also noticed that there was quite a bit of scouts being used by either side for both battles. Um, how much do you use uh, the use of scouts? Whilst we've attempted the use of scouts before, the size of the map we found that whilst we'd love to go out scouting and finding the enemy, for the most part, we know where they are, and if we are sending out scouts, all we're going to find out is, oh, they're on the left, let's go right. They now know we're on the right because they've got scouts, so they've shifted it. In a battle the size that they are, scouting is effective, but what it ends up is a game of cat and mouse until one side hits first. And our lack of scouting in the previous two battles was definitely to our detriment. We should have used them more. But we found that their use in these small battle areas has been limited, for the most part. Okay, okay. On the on an offensive um, on an offensive uh, note, defensive, they're invaluable. I've found them to be utterly invaluable in the few times I've been on the defense. But on the offense, I've found very little use for them. Right. Yeah, I, I certainly understand that, and. Uh, General uh, Mr. Cody it was certainly making use of them as well. Now, the sunken road map is a lot more open than the West Woods map is, and um, at the very beginning of the battle, it looked like you made sure to get in there as quickly as possible, trying to uh, get that point, and we did have it for a small while until we got pushed mm. off. Now, uh, how hard is it to try and organize your line in the midst of all those woods and brush and such? Trying to organize a line in the West Woods is nigh impossible. If you're trying to go in there to fight line to line, both lines are going to get slaughtered by those people deciding to fight as skirmishers. So, case in point being that there was about halfway through the battle, we pushed on the right flank to discover that most of the rebels were clumped up in the center expecting us to come down the middle. We mowed about half of them down before they could even respond. And Westwoods has definitely been a map where it is tooth and nail fighting and there's very little delicacy about any of it. There's no <laughs> fancy lines. You can't, you can't try and be a gentleman in those woods. It's do or die. Right, I certainly understand that. Well, it was, as I mentioned, certainly a pleasure watching you in the in action, and we'll hope to uh, see you and the rest of the boys uh, perhaps next Friday. Alrighty, so... <laughs> Sorry, Sergeant hits me just had a bit of a interesting moment there with his head. Now, in any case, uh, congratulations on your dual wins today. Very nicely done. And it looks like 
That being said, it was by the hairs of your teeth. How do you think it went today? I'd say it went pretty well. Normally, it uh, doesn't play nearly as aggressive, so the tickets don't go as low. But uh, I'd say we held pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, the aggressiveness is what really led us to victory, man. Just uh, the willingness to... Woof, damn, I don't know, man. It's just, yeah, it was, uh, it was close, but at the same time, we got that advantage, disadvantage right off the bat, and we still held it on to it, so... I'm just proud of, I'm, I'm honestly proud of everybody that was there. I think the coordination was really, really good uh, between you know, skirmishers and the regular lines. I think everything just, you know, blended well together. Absolutely. Now, speaking of which, uh, what goes into some of the uh, tactics that come through your mind? Is that something that you really work out with each other, or how does that usually go for you? Uh, it, it varies from unit to unit. Uh, typically, uh, you, you'll have your skirmishers, or, or both the eyes and kind of the, uh, the enfilade fire, uh, always trying to keep on the enemy's main line if you can't get in on the side, obviously, and then just try to keep uh, the main line of brace of where they're at and such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing is uh, when it came to communication, I, I, at first, when I came in and started leading First Texas and a few puppies and whatnot, and some people that just wanted to follow us, at first, Proud Cody was just leading his own guys and holding the point and like the main group of people. So I knew he was going to be center, but at first we didn't really communicate because uh, I knew he was going to be center. So and on, for example, uh, is it Sunken Road? That's the map we were on, right? Uh, yep, yeah, Sunken that was Road. The first map. Yeah, I, I knew he was going to be center, so I was, we are going to do some form of flanking, either from the left or the right, and it just ended up being our strategy for the rest of the game, because they're, the Union is going to either come down straight center, and then we can hit him from the back, and starting hits me, always gave me advice, and then finally, Cody, we started opening communication, like, Cody was like, oh, hey, I see him going right now. I was like, oh, okay, I'll go right. We'll, I'll take the first Texas and these other guys to the right, and we'll hide in the woods, and then when they charge, we'll hit them in the back <laughs> and counter charge so they can't see us. Yeah, no, that we'll worked amazing. Yeah. By holding the center, I think by having a strong point in the center uh, allowed for some really good moves, and uh, like I said, or like uh, Bowen said, uh, you know, since we got overrun, we had uh, another force to protect us in case something did go bad. Right. Yeah. I think that was three times you saved us. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. was three times that we pushed them off the fences after they their go out. Yeah, no, that was great. I mean, we got their numbers down, so you guys easily got Oh, no, them. no, I'm not discrediting by any means. You guys were fantastic yeah. work. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah. At the beginning, communication was non-existent, and then we actually started hitting each other up. And like, all right, I see him right, and, you know. So, beginning, no communication. At the end, communication, and it just got even better. And the second game was even better, too. Very nice, yeah. And speaking of the second game in the West Woods, uh, which is just nothing but scrub, nothing but trees everywhere, uh, eliminating any possible line of sight, um, how easy is it or hard is it to try and defend or attack in that? I would say the best offense and defense for that map is to, to use your skirmishers well. That, that place is a skirmishers pet dream, so to say. I mean, you can really move about and good cover. There's areas that you can look at your main approaches and you can give good forewarning. You can easily take some shots, fall back, um, and, and never really be seen. Um, so really, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll see guys that will form up in the open, but you just got to take advantage of all that cover. It's everywhere and it will work for you. Yeah, and what we were doing, what we were doing, all the like the most people held on the point. You, I mean. I, what I started realizing, because that was the first time I've ever been on that map, and I'll say that, but you start noticing the Union guys always behind trees, always behind whatever, shrubs, and they're always on the, the like, they basically form a crescent moon around the point. So we just basically started running around and just clearing them out as we ran in a wedge almost, clearing them out from the tree, clearing them out them from the bush, and then yeah. we, we turn back around and do the same thing, basically in a... In, <laughs> Constantly going back and forth, clearing out that crested moon yep. shape. Always yep. about 50 to 100 meters in front of the line and just rolling up their lines left and right. Yeah, we kept them on their toes. The, the flankers got flanks. We had a couple guys on the far right side. We'd wait for them to push in and then just slash them from the side. Yeah, that's how I ended up stabbing, <laughs> stabbing Stone in the face two times. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. All right. Yeah, as well, soon as I killed him that last time, he messaged me. <laughs> Well, very nicely done on both occasions. 
And if you guys are going to be available, we do have another instance of this coming up next Friday, the 21st, and we'd certainly appreciate you guys joining us if you can. I mean, I'll definitely be there. I got yeah, nothing I'm, else going on. Yeah, I'll do my <laughs> best sure. to make that. Awesome. What and time is it? I'll, it would be the exact same time, uh, 3 p.m. East, Eastern Standard. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely be there. No doubt in my mind I'll be there. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another edition of George's Corner, or at least the very premier edition, I should say. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye now. As we get volleyed at. <laughs> <laughs>